10.1 oxidation states, let's move on. Let's first discuss how to determine oxidation states. Oxidation states, or oxidation numbers, are numbers that are assigned to uh, keep track of electrons based on the idea that shared electrons always will belong to the more electronegative element. This is because more electronegative elements attract electrons more, so they tend to be negative, while less electronegative elements tend to be positive. All right, so now let's talk about um, how to find out and assign oxidation states to specific uh, species in chemistry. So to find out and assign uh, oxidation states to specific species in chemistry, we need to keep in mind the following four rules that I've listed here. Uh, rule one, note that atoms or free elements always have an oxidation state of zero always. That's because atoms have an equal number of protons and electrons, therefore that makes them neutral. For example, F's oxidation state in F2 is equal to zero, uh, C's oxidation state in C60 is equal to zero, and Na's oxidation state uh, in Na is equal to zero. And that's because um, all, all of these examples here show atoms of only one element, and if it's all atoms of only one element, that makes the oxidation state zero or neutral overall, okay? So remember whenever you have all atoms of one element, the oxidation state is zero overall because it's neutral because you have the same number of protons and neutrons, okay? The second rule I want you to know is compounds um, have oxidation states of zero, and that's because the sum of the oxidation numbers of elements in the compound always cancel out to zero. For example, in NaF, um, Na has a charge of plus one if you look up its top oxidation state, and F has a charge of minus one if you look up its top oxidation state. So uh, the plus one and minus one cancel out for an oxidation state of zero overall for NaF, okay? And Na2SO4, um, two Na's have a charge of plus one times two or plus two total, whereas um, SO4 is a charge of negative two from table E. So this plus two from Na2 and two minus from SO4 cancel each other out to get an oxidation state of zero overall for the compound Na2SO4. So remember for a compound, the sum of the oxidation numbers is always equal to zero overall because the compounds elements will cancel each other's charges out, okay? Next, we have monatomic and polyatomic ions. So first off, um, you can find the oxidation states of monatomic or one atom ions from the periodic table by looking at the top oxidation state um, of the element on the periodic table. Polyatomic ions charges, on the other hand, can just be found very simply uh, by looking on table E at their charges, okay? So let's try some examples. For example, so in NaCl, Na's charge is equal to uh, the top oxidation state of Na in the periodic table, which is plus one, as shown down here. Therefore, the charge of Na in NaCl would be plus one based on the top oxidation state of Na, which is plus one, okay? Cl's charge, on the other hand, in NaCl um, equals the top oxidation state of Cl in the periodic table, which is negative one, as shown down here. Therefore, the charge of Cl and NaCl is negative 1 based on the top oxidation state of, um, of Cl, okay? Now, um, in Na2SO4, Na's charge equals the top oxidation state of Na on the periodic table, which is plus 1 as shown down here, right? Uh, so therefore, the charge of Na would be plus 1 by itself. However, since the compound says Na2SO4 and not NaSO4, the total oxygen state of Na2 and Na2SO4 would be plus 1 times 2, or positive 2. The SO4 part, on the other hand, would have an oxygen state of negative 2 based on its charge from table E as shown down here. Okay? Therefore, the charge or oxygen state of SO4 and Na2SO4 would be negative 2 to balance out the Na2. Finally, for rule number four, we have oxygen and hydrogen, two elements that have very specific oxidation states, okay? So oxygen, based on its top oxidation state of uh, negative two on the periodic table, if you check on your own, usually will have an oxidation state of negative two since that's its top oxidation state. However, there are two exceptions I want you to know. All right, the first exception is H2O2, where O has an oxidation state of negative one. The reason why this makes sense is if you break this apart, you have H2 followed by O2 right? And uh, H2 has an oxidation state of positive 1 for its top oxidation state times 2 based on its subscript, giving you a total oxidation state for H2 of positive 2. As a result, O2 must be negative 2 to balance out the positive 2 from H2. 
okay? However, if we find the charge of only one O, it would only be negative one for one of the O's. That's because O2 is negative two, so for O1, it would be half of that, which is negative one. So therefore, that's why the oxidation state of O in H2O2 is um, negative one, okay? Now, uh, the other exception is OF2, where O has an oxidation state of positive two. The reason why this makes sense is because if you break this apart, you have O followed by F2, right? And um, F2, if you check it out, um, has the following oxidation state. The top oxidation state of F is negative one if you look it up, and you multiply it by the number of atoms based on the subscript of two, which is two, giving you a total oxidation state of negative two for F2. So to balance that out, almost O to balance out the negative two to zero must have an oxidation state of positive two, okay? So that's why the oxidation state of O is positive 2 and O of 2. So basically what you need to remember for oxygen is um, what you need to remember for oxygen is the oxidation state is negative 2 except in H2O2 where has an oxidation state of negative 1 and in O of 2 where O has an oxidation state of positive 2. Okay? Uh, the, the next element is hydrogen. Hydrogen based on its top oxidation state of positive 1 on the periodic table usually has an oxidation state of positive 1. The only exception is in what are called hydrides. And what hydride means is um, it's where H becomes an, a negative ion with an oxidation state of negative 1. Since hydrides are H having an oxidation state of negative 1, it would be written as H to the 1 minus, right, like this, okay? So examples of hydrides would include NaH, where Na's charge is positive 1, so therefore H's charge must be negative 1 to balance it out. Another example, which is not written in the slide, but I want you to know anyway, is CaH2, where Ca's charge is positive 2, so therefore H, H2's charge must be negative 1 times 2, or negative 2 to balance out the Ca2+. plus. Okay? So make sure you write this example, because it'll be part of the checkpoint questions. So remember that uh, hydrogen has an oxidation state of positive 1 based on its top oxidation state, except in hydrides with metals, where H has a charge of negative 1 written like this, H-. minus. All right, so... Make sure you know these rules before you move on. Now let's talk about how to find oxidation states of elements, um, ions, and compounds. All right? There's a four-step process here that I want you to follow, and we're going to look through some examples as we go through this. All right, so the first step in the process is to write the total oxidation state using the rules. So remember that the, um, that the oxidation rule for a compound or a free element is equal to zero since it's neutral overall if it's a compound or a free element. For a polyatomic ion, let's remember that the that its oxidation state is equal to the ion charge from table E, which you can find using your reference tables. All right? Step two is, um, after you find the total oxidation state, you have to find the oxidation states of each element. And let's remember that the oxidation state of an element is equal to the top oxidation state in the element box in the periodic table. And any unknown element's um, oxidation state is written as X. All right? So we're just finding the general uh, basic oxidation states for each element. Then in step three, you have to find the total oxidation state of each element by multiplying um, the oxidation state by the subscript next to it. So for example, if you had Na2, it would be plus one times two gives you plus two, as we saw in the previous slide. All right, and in step four, you have to set the sum of the elements oxidation states added together equal to the total oxidation state, then you have to solve for x. See, so first you have to add up all of the elements, individual total oxidation states, and you have to set that equal to the total oxidation state from step one, which is either zero for a compound or free element, or equal to the ion charge from table E for polyatomic ions oxidation states. Then you have to solve for x, which is the unknown. All right, so follow this four-step process as you find the oxidation states of elements and compounds, which is generally what you'll be asked to do on the regions. All right. So example one says, find the oxidation state of Cr and K2Cr2O7. So um, as we know, what we're looking at with K2Cr2O7 is a compound. All right, and as we know, the oxidation state of a compound is generally equal to zero. All right, since K2Cr2O7 is a compound, its oxidation state is equal to zero because compounds are generally neutral. And step two, we have to find the oxidation states of each element in this compound. So we can do that by looking at the periodic table. And remember, we have to write the unknowns unknown elements oxidation state is x. All right, so k's oxidation state from the periodic table is plus 1 because it's the top oxidation state. O's oxidation state based on the periodic table is negative 2 because that's the top oxidation state. Cr is what we don't know, so we set it as x since it's the unknown. All right? 
So these are the basic um, oxidation states of each element based on the periodic table element boxes. In step three, we have to find the total of each element in terms of oxidation states by multiplying the oxidation state of each element by the subscript next to it. So K's oxidation state, as we know, is plus one, but K is a subscript of two, so you multiply plus one times two to give you plus two. That's because K2 is equal to two K, so you do two times one, plus one, or you get plus two. For O's total oxidation state, um, we had to multiply its oxidation state of negative two by the subscript of seven in the formula for O. So we get negative two times seven is equal to negative 14. And again, that's because we have O7. So we have seven O's. Therefore, we multiply O's oxidation state of negative two by the subscript of seven that gives negative 14. For C, our total oxidation state is equal to two X. And that's because um, CR's oxidation state is unknown. So we call it X. But we had to make sure we multiply it by 2 because the subtract of CR is 2 according to the formula. All right, so, um, you know, as we know, CR2 is equal to 2CR. So you do 2 times the um, oxidation state, which we don't know, x. And we get 2x, all right? In step 4, we have to set the sum of these um, elements' total oxidation states equal to the total oxidation state for the compound of 0. So if we do that in the next step, we get 0. The total oxidation state for the compound is equal to... K's oxidation state 2 plus CR's oxidation state 2X plus O's oxidation state negative 14. All right, so the sum of K, CR, and O is equal to the total oxidation state of the compound 0. All right, so 0 is equal to 2 plus 2X minus 14. And if we simplify, we get 0 is equal to negative 12 plus 2X. And if we add 12 to both sides, we get 2X is equal to 12. And if we divide 2, we get X is equal to plus 6. Therefore, the oxidation state of Cr and K2Cr2O7 is equal to plus 6. All right? Now let's try another example. It says find the oxygen state of phosphorus, which is P, and the phosphate ion PO4 3 minus. So in step 1, we already know that the oxidation state is uh, 3 minus because that's a charge on the ion phosphate. All right? Uh, so therefore, the oxygen state is negative 3 because the charge on the ion is negative 3. So we know the total oxygen state of the polyatomic ion. In step 2, we have to establish the oxidation states of each element in this phosphate ion, P and O. So let's do that by using the periodic table. First of all, P or phosphorus is the oxidation state we don't know, so we set it as X. All right, O's oxidation state is negative 2 because it's the top oxidation state on the periodic table. All right, so there we go. In step 3, we have to find the total oxidation states of P and O by multiplying their oxidation states based on the periodic table by their subscripts in the formula. The total oxidation states of P is equal to X because in the formula we have 1 P. So we do X times 1 gives you X. For the total oxygen state of O, we know that's oxidation state is negative 2 from the top oxidation state in the periodic table, and we multiply it by its subscript of 4 in the formula PO4 3 minus to give us a total oxygen state for O of negative 8. All right, since we have O4, we have four O's. Uh, so we do negative 2 the oxygen state times the subscript of 4 gives us negative 8. All right, so we have to add up the total oxygen states of P and O and set it equal to the uh, oxidation state of the polyatomic ion of negative 3. So if we do that, we get P's total oxygen save X plus O's ox total oxygen save negative 8 is equal to the total oxygen state of the polyatomic ion, which is negative 3. So setting that up, we get negative 3 is equal to X minus 8. And if we add 8 to both sides, we get X is equal to plus 5. That is the oxidation state of phosphorus in PO4, 3 minus. All right? So example 3 says find the oxygen of sulfur and the sulfate ion in this whole complex. What's really easy about this is they're asking you to find the oxygen state of sulfur in a sulfate ion. As we know, if we look on table E, the oxygen state of um, sulfate is negative 2 because its charge is negative 2. All right, so sulfate ion is equal to SO4 2 minus as the ion based on table E, and we know its total oxygen state is negative 2 because its charge is negative 2 according to table E. So that's the total ox oxidation state of the polyatomic ion. In step 2, we have to write the oxygen states of S and O. S is X because that's what we don't know. O's oxidation state is negative 2 because it's the top oxidation state in the periodic table. All right. Uh, we have to find the total S and total O. S's total is X because according to SO4 2 minus, we only have one S. So we do 1 times X gives us a total oxygen state of X for S. Remember, S is the unknown. For the total oxy oxidation state of O, we have O4 in the formula, SO4, 2 minus. So we do um, O's oxidation state of negative 2 according to the periodic table. Times the subscript of 4 gives us a total oxidation state of negative 8 for O4. All right, in step 4, we had to add up the total of S and O and set it equal to the 
total oxygen state of negative 2 for the polyatomic ion uh, sulfate. So if we set that up, we get S is total oxygen state of X plus uh, O is total oxygen state of negative 8 is equal to the total oxygen state of the sulfate ion negative 2. So X minus A is equal to negative 2, and if we add 8 to both sides, we get X is equal to plus 6. So that's the oxidation state of sulfur and the sulfate ion SO4 2 minus. Finally, we have example 4, um, and it says find the oxygen state of carbon in H2C2O4. So the oxidation state of, the, of this whole thing is, is that of a compound, and we know that the oxygen state of a compound is equal to 0. Then we have to find the oxygen states of H, C, and O. So H is top oxidation number on the periodic table is plus 1, so that's the oxidation state. C we don't know, so it's X. And O's top oxygen state is negative 2. All right, and number 3, to find the total of each, H's total oxygen state is plus 1 times the subtract of 2 gives you plus 2. C's is 2 times X and GFC2, you do X times 2. For O, you do the oxygen state of O negative 2 times 4 gives you negative 8 since it's O4. All right, then you add these up and you set it equal to 0. And if you um, simplify it, you get 2X is equal to 6 and X is equal to plus 3, which is the oxidation rate of carbon in H2C2O4. Please watch the next video for sample problems on the second part of this lesson and a more detailed explanation of this. Thank you very much. Let's continue on with the second part of this lesson. Uh, example 4 says find the oxidation state of carbon in H2C2O4. Right, so H2C2O4 is a compound, and as we know, the oxidation state of a compound is equal to zero because compounds are generally neutral. In step two, we have to um, find the oxidation states of each element using the top oxidation states on the periodic table. All right, the top oxidation state for H is plus one, so that's H's oxidation state in this compound. C's oxygen, oxidation state we don't know, so we write X, and O's oxidation state is negative two because that's the top oxidation state in the periodic table. Okay? For uh, step three, you have to find the total oxygen states of O, H, and C um, to use for step four. So the total oxygen state of H is um, plus one, H is oxygen state, times its subscript of two in the formula since it's H2, giving us plus two for the total oxygen state of H. Because it's H2, it's 2H, so you do um, plus one, the oxygen state, times the subscript of two gives you plus two. For C, the... Um, Oxygen save is X, and the subscript of C in the formula is 2, so you do 2 times X to give you 2X for the total oxygen save C in the, um, it, for this formula. All right. For O, we have um, O's oxygen save is negative 2, and we have a subscript of 4, so we do negative 2. The oxygen save O times the subscript of 4 gives you negative 8 for the total oxygen save O in this formula. Okay. So in step four, you have to set the total oxy oxidation state of the compound equal to the um, sum of the oxidation states of the elements. So you set zero, the oxidation state of the compound H2C2O4, equal to the sum of the oxidation states of H, C, and O. So you do two for H plus two X for C plus negative eight for O. And if you simplify that, you get negative six plus two X is equal to zero. All right, and then if you add 6 to both sides, you get 2x is equal to 6. And if you solve for x, you get x is equal to plus 3. So therefore, that's the oxidation state of carbon in H2C2O4. All right? So there you go. That's how you do that. Um, now let's go through some sample problems using, using what we just learned. All right, so um, number one says, was the oxidation state of chlorine in KClO3? Right, so um, KCl3 is a compound, as we know. And as we know, the oxidation state of a compound is equal to zero since it's um, neutral. So therefore, the total oxidation state in this problem is equal to zero because it's that of a compound. For step two, we have to find the oxidation states of each element. Remember, use the top oxidation states on the periodic table. The top oxidation state of K is plus one. Therefore, that's the oxidation state in the formula. Cl's oxidation state is what we have to find out, so we put it as X since it's the unknown. O's oxidation state... Um, is negative 2 since that's the top oxidation state in the periodic table. All right, and step 3 to find the total of KCl and O to use in step 4. K's total oxidation state is plus 1 because you do the oxidation state of plus 1 times the subscript of 1, giving you plus 1. All right, for Cl, um, the total oxidation state is equal to X because you multiply the oxidation state of X by Cl subscript of 1, giving you X for the total Cl. For total O, you multiply O's oxidation state of negative 2 by its subscript of 3, since it's O3, giving you negative 2 times 3, 
or negative six for the total oxygen state of O. All right, step four, you have to set the um, total oxygen state of the compound zero equal to the sum of the oxygen states of KCl and O. So if you add them up, you get zero is equal to one plus X plus negative six, or more simplified, zero is equal to negative five plus X. If you solve for X, you get that it's equal to plus five, which is the oxidation state, therefore, of chlorine and KClO3. And number two, it says, what is the oxidation number of sulfur in the sulfate ion in K2SO4? So if you look on table E, you know that sulfate ion is written as SO4 2 minus, since it's a polyatomic ion. And the oxidation state of a sulfate ion is equal to negative two, since that's the charge on the ion. All right, so therefore, the total oxidation state is that of a polyatomic ion sulfate, which is negative two. <laughs> so that's the total oxidation state for this problem. In step two, we have to find the oxidation states of each um, of the elements in sulfate uh, using uh, the periodic table. As his oxidation state is X, since it's what we have to find out is the unknown, and O's oxidation state is negative two, since it's the top oxidation state in the periodic table. Now we have to find the total of S and O. S's total is X because S is no subscript next to you, so you just do X, which is the unknown, times the subscript of one. All right, giving you x for the total s. For total o, you multiply its oxidation save negative 2 from the periodic table times the subscript of 4 and SO4 2 minus, um, giving you negative 2 times 4 and negative 8. All right, in step 4, I apologize for this mistake. Uh, in step 4, you have to set the total oxygen state of the polyatomic ion negative 2 equal to the sum of S and O. So negative 2 is equal to S's total oxygen state of X plus O's total oxygen state of negative 8, giving you negative 2 is equal to X plus negative 8. If you add 8 to both sides, you get what X is equal to, which is plus 6. Therefore, plus 6 is the oxidation number of sulfur in the sulfate ion, SO4 2 minus. And number 3, you have to find the oxidation number of carbon in Na2CO3. Na2CO3 is a compound, therefore the total oxygen state is equal to 0 because a compound is neutral. Uh, and step two, we have to find the oxygen states of NAC and O based on the periodic table. NA's top oxidation state is plus one, therefore that's the oxidation state in this formula. C's oxidation state is unknown, so you set it equal to X. O's top oxidation state is negative two, therefore that's the oxidation state in this formula up here. All right, we, now we have to find the total oxygen states of Na, C, and O. Na has a subscript of two next to it, so you multiply Na's oxygen state of plus one times a subscript of two, giving you plus two for the total Na. For the total C, you multiply C's total oxidation, uh, sorry, oxidation state of X times its subscript of one, giving you a total C oxidation state of X. For total O's oxidation state, you multiply O's oxidation state from the periodic table negative two times its subscript of three in the formula, giving you negative two times three is equal to negative six for the total oxidation state of O. All right, in step four, you have to set the total oxidation state of the compound zero equal to the sum of Na, C's, and O's total oxidation states. So if you do that, you get, um, 0 is equal to 2 plus x plus negative 6. Simplify, that gives you negative 4 plus x is equal to 0. All right, if you solve for x, you get that x is equal to plus 4. Therefore, that's the oxidation state of carbon in Na2CO3. All right, number 4 says, what is the oxidation state of chromium in CaCr2O7? Okay, so CaCr2O7 is a compound. Therefore, we know that total oxygen state is equal to 0 because compounds are neutral. In step two, we have to find the oxidation states of Ca, Cr, and O based on the periodic table. Ca's top oxidation state is plus two, therefore, that's its oxidation state in this formula. Um, Cr's oxidation state is unknown, so we set equal to x. O's top oxidation state on the periodic table is equal to negative two. So, um, yeah, so there you go. So we set O's oxygen state equal to negative two since that's the top oxidation state in the periodic table. All right, for total Ca, total Cr, and O, we have to multiply each oxidation state from the periodic table by the subscripts in the formula, all right? So CA's total oxidation state is equal to its uh, oxidation state of plus two from the periodic table times its subscript of one, giving us plus two for the total oxygen state of CA. For the total oxidation state of CR, we multiply its oxidation state of X, which is unknown, times its subscript of two in the formula, giving us two X for the total oxy oxidation state of CR. For O's total oxy oxidation state, we multiply its uh, oxidation state of negative two, which is the top oxidation state on the periodic table times its subscript of seven in the formula, giving us two times ne negative two times seven or negative 14 for the total oxidation state of O in this formula. Now to find um, the uh, oxidation state of chromium, 
what we have to do is we have to um, set the sum of the oxidation state of the compound zero equal to the sum of the oxidation states plus two plus two x plus negative 14. All right, so if we add these up, we get two plus two x plus negative 14 is equal to the total oxidation state of the compound, which is zero. If we simplify further, we get zero is equal to negative 12 plus two x. And if we simplify further, we get 2x is equal to 12. And if we divide 2 on both sides, we get x is equal to plus 6, which is the oxidation state of chromium in CaCr2O7. Oh, All right, number 5 says, what is the oxidation state of sulfur in S8? Since um, S8 is a free element, or in other words, since S is bonded to atoms of itself, we know its oxidation state is equal to, to 0. All right? In number six, it says, in which group of the periodic table do most elements exhibit both positive and negative oxidation states? As we know, elements in group 17 exhibit positive and negative oxidation states because some of them are positive, some of them are negative. You can check that on your own. Number seven, uh, magnesium, calcium, and strontium all have the same oxy oxidation state plus two if you look it up on the periodic table. All right, number eight says, what is the oxidation number of carbon in the oxalate ion c 2042 minus? So the oxalate ion has an oxidation state of negative 2 since that's the charge on it. And you can even check this on table E. But the total oxidation state is equal to the um, charge on the polyatomic ion, which is negative 2. All right, so this is the total oxidation state for this problem. Now we need to solve in step 2 for the oxidation states of um, each element uh, um, using the periodic table. So C is what we don't know, so we said equal to X. O's oxidation state is equal to the top oxidation state on the periodic table, which is equal to negative 2, if you check it on your own. All right, the total oxidation state of C is equal to its uh, oxidation state of X times its subscript of 2 in the formula, so you get 2X. O's total oxidation state is equal to its oxidation state of negative 2 from the periodic table times its subscript of 4, giving us negative 2 times 4 and negative 8 for the total oxidation state of O. All right, now we have to add the add the sum of these elements oxidation states 2x and negative 8 and set it equal to the um, oxidation state of um, negative 2 for the uh, for the ion all right so we get that uh, the the total oxidation state of the oxidation state on negative 2 is equal to the sum of C, which is 2x, plus the sum of O, which is negative 8. And if we simplify that further, we get 2x minus A is equal to negative 2. Now we can solve for x by adding 8 to both sides, and we get 2x is equal to negative 2 plus 8, or 6. We can solve for x by dividing 2 from both sides, and therefore we get x is equal to plus 3, which is the oxidation number of carbon and the oxalate ion c 2042 minus. All right, number 9 says... Based on this reaction, what is the change in oxidation state for oxygen in this reaction? All right, so um, O2 is a free element, so therefore we know its oxidation state is equal to zero. All right, um, and we know that um, the oxidation state of the compound Al2O3 is also equal to zero because compounds are neutral. All right, so the oxidation state of O2 we already know is zero, and we know that the oxidation state of Al2 O3 overall is equal to zero. So in step two, O and O2 is equal to zero because the free element's oxidation state is equal to zero. Uh, for Al2 O3, we have to break it down as follows. So Al and Al2 O3 is equal to plus three because that's the top oxidation state. O's top oxidation state in the periodic table is equal to X because we don't know what it is. All right, so for the element, we know that the total O and O2 is equal to zero because a free element's oxidation state is equal to zero. For the compound Al2O3, we know that the total O in Al2O3 is equal to 3x because you multiply O's oxidation state of x, which is unknown, times its subscript of 3 in Al2O3, giving you 3x. For the total oxidation state of Al, we multiply its oxidation state of plus 3 times its um, subscript of 2 in the formula Al2O3, giving us plus 3 times 2 gives you plus 6. All right? So uh, for the element O2, we know its oxidation state is equal to zero. For the compound, we add 3x for O plus 6 for Al, and we set that equal to the oxidation state of the compound Al203, which is equal to zero, and we have to solve for x. So if we subtract 6 from both sides, we get 3x is equal to negative 6. If we divide 3 from both sides, we get x is equal to negative 2, which is the oxidation state of um, O and Al203. All right, and the oxidation state of O2, O and O2 is equal to zero. Therefore, the change in oxidation state for oxygen is from zero in O2 
to negative 2 and AL203 as we just solved in this problem. All right? And number 10, it's uh, it just says determine the oxidation state for each chlorine and each chlorine-containing compound. So for KCl, we know it's a compound, and KCl3, we know it's a compound. So the total oxidation states of each uh, KCl and KCl3 are equal to zero since their compounds are neutral. All right, then we have to find the oxygen states of K and Cl and KCl. K's oxygen is plus one as the top oxygen in the periodic table. Cl's oxygen is X since we don't know it. All right, um, in KCl3, K's oxygen state in the periodic table is plus one. Cl's oxygen state is X since we don't know it. And O's top oxygen state in the periodic table is negative two. To find the total oxygen state, we have to multiply it by the subscript. I'm not going to go through that, but you can do that on your own. Um, if you just do that, you'll find that the total... Um, of K and KCl is plus 1, the total Cl and KCl is X. The total K and KCl3 is plus 1, the total Cl and KCl3 is X, and the total O and KCl3 is negative 2 times 3 or negative 6. Again, you can solve for this on your own, but you'll find that the total oxygen state of Cl and KCl is um, negative 1, and the total oxygen state of Cl and KCl3 is plus 5. For number 11, you have to just use the top oxygen state of H, which is plus 1, Cl's is X, and O's top oxygen state is negative 2. The total of H is plus 1, the total of Cl is X, and the total of O is negative 2 times 4, negative 8. You add these three up, you get 1 plus X plus negative 8 is equal to the total oxygen state of the compound HCl04, which is 0, and if you solve for X, you get um, Cl's oxygen state in this compound is plus 7. All right, please complete these homework questions.